my sister-in-law hates the smell of coffee. That's blasphemy. Can't stand it. Right. Compares it to sewage. She compares it to sewage. Her husband is not allowed to make coffee in the house. What the hell? He's become a tea drinker. He's become a tea drinker. Coffee smells good, even if it doesn't. Right. Taste. I don't understand. That's all subjective, right? That's all. Important. What 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 is what is wrong with this? It's not useful for everyone. It's like a very niche thing. Right. Yeah. yeah, very specific specific audience. It's too expensive to make your coffee. That's very expensive. It would be hard to clean. Hard to clean. Good. All right. Um, Sharissa, do you sound like you you drink coffee? I you drink coffee. <laughs> and and do you have you ever grinded your own coffee before? Um, I have. And, and I, go ahead. Oh, I use a French press so to clean that out at the end too. It was kind of a mess. Right. So as as hard as you try with your French press, you can't not help but make a mess, right? As it's because because I, I have lots of, I have the same probably device. Mm-hmm. You. you would would we agree that a French press is as hard as you try? It still kind of makes a mess. Yes. Okay. So this uses ground coffee and the smell, the price, the audience, all that, all that aside is this is a beautiful piece of industrial design. But practically speaking, for all of the points that y'all just mentioned, this is why this thing fails. I'm sorry, did did you just say coffee alarm clock? Like as soon as I said coffee alarm clock, your spider, your UX design spider sense should have gone off. Right? You guys, y'all should say like, okay, he's joking. Wait, I'm not sharing my screen anymore. Can y'all see this? Can we see it now? Now we can. Oh, I'm sorry. You go. <laughs> I must have sounded like a, like a, uh, all right. No. We had before and then it went away. Yeah, we saw it before. So. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> um, yeah. What does this have to do with what we're talking about exclusively this week? This is no different than dribble. I'm going to keep bring, driving this point home. This is no different than a really nice look. Look at this. This is perfect. I would I would love to roll over and grab a cup of coffee in the morning. But I know realistically, I'm going to spill it. And there's going to be grinds everywhere. It reeks. Your UX portfolio is going to say something. That is a wonderful, gorgeous screenshot. Look at all these happy users using it. And then we go to the prototype and it's like, oh, this thing isn't as good as I, I got let down by this. And this is what we're trying to avoid. And we can come up with a lot more examples of this. Okay. All right. Without being too long. Yeah. So. I can't believe how much it is. All right, that finished. So we're going to close up that. Okay. Um, this is a world famous, um, world world famous. Many articles have been written about this. Um, just a UX one, UX two talk about the design squiggle at all. Okay. This is why design has, has always made sense to me. Okay. A designer was asked, um, what is the design process? And this is what he drew out. This is how I described the design process. Um, you can buy this t-shirt, you can buy this poster, you can, it's just, this is open source. This is like, this is now licensed and put into, not now, but was licensed and put into the Creative Commons. And this frustrates students right here because this is the process. Well, what's the frustrating part? The frustrating part is we think design is where my mouse cursor is, that it happens here at the end, right? But, but, but this is where all of the stuff actually happens and all of the chaos and all of the mess. And, and all I want you to, to understand here is don't expect it all to be at the end clearly defined. Like you have to expect that majority of your time and energy and investment is going to be in all of the squiggles and the chaos and the mess. And I need you to embrace that because that is the J-O-B. I would be lying to you if it was pure clarity and focus all the time. Majority of the time, you're going to be arguing about whether or not, right, what, what typeface, what system UI font to use. That, that's not the majority of your, majority of the time is like, should this product exist, right? 
should this product exist? <laughs> should this product exist? And that is a lot of what our job is. Or how, should this feature exist? All right. And we're going to be arguing a lot. Okay. I would love to talk to the people who, who decided, you know what? A coffee alarm clock is a great idea. And I want to hear their rationale. Right? Strong opinions loosely held. Strong opinions loosely held. Strong opinions loosely held. Okay. All right, check, check. All right, all that said, um, this is what y'all are missing out on. And I'm sorry. And I'm sorry that this class can't be um, what one of the strengths of this class is the non digital projects. One of the strengths of this class is you get to actually make an uh, interaction design inside of a space and inside of a gallery space and have real people. And these are all the, the phases and I sent this out, right? What I'm sorry that, you know, I am I'm legitimately sorry, like a past class, they have, they got to design a mobile library that got to, um, that's being constructed right now. And they had input on that. They got to help decide what features this mobile library is gonna have. And we spent a lot of time saying, if you tell me that th this is a van with books, you're doing this wrong. Right, the the thing is being constructed right now. Right, they got the funding for it, and in the student's UX portfolio, they can say we contributed right to a service that is going to be used countywide. They're going to go to rural areas that don't have access right to all the stuff that in you know that we might take for granted. And students were a part of that. And one of the first things they did was they talked to the client, and then they card sorted a whole bunch of stuff. Just, just post-it notes all over the place. So you're missing out on that. You're missing out. You get to go to a, um, you get to design a game and you get to take it to an elementary school and have it played, right? And I'm, I'm sorry for that. Um, this Bauhaus exhibition was another one. The students were pissed at me. They were mad. Colin, I have to go set up my project inside of the, stu the Eastern Student Gallery? Yes. Why? Because how many times is the Bauhaus competition going to come to Cheney, Washington? How many times are we going to get an international um, international design committee to come to Cheney, Washington? Right? If my son wasn't in the room, I'd be cursing right now. <laughs> oh, you hear me? <laughs> of course. That, that, that's an opportunity. Right? And I mean, we, have, we have pictures of that. And one of the teams did a voice activated thing. And you guys remember the Bauhaus competition that happened last spring right? or last fall. Right? And they got to do it. And I, I look at all of the past UX projects and I think this would make a lot more sense if you know, the situation were different. But we're, the, we're in the situation that we're in and we're going to make the most of it. All right, good, good there. Oh, Social Security's kiosk, that was a good one. Right, they have to go, they had spent many, many days at the social security project. All right, oh, more interaction. All right, so I'm gonna close that up, okay? All right, so um, Chad Clark of Stay Alfred, all right? Um, Stay Alfred is kind of like Airbnb, right? And they're, they're based out of uh, Spokane Valley and they're one of the big employers in, for uh, UX designers in the area. Right. We've had some students work in the past, and I said, Chad, can you come and talk to my students because they think I'm full of it. I was like, what? He's like, yeah, yeah. It's just like, the, like I, I, need, I need someone else. And I said, and he goes, well, you want to, I said, just, just go in and present. And I bet you we say more similar than different. He goes, are you sure? I was like, yeah, yeah. Just, and he came in, and he presented, and I'm going to jump around here. Okay, and there's a journey map, user flows, right? We got into this and he's like, yeah, we get a lot of this, but we're, we're, what we're really missing is this part right here. That's your protopi. And I jumped out of my seat and then presentation. He's like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, see, look, look, not a Colin thing, not a Colin thing. And the whole presentation, I was like, not a Colin thing, right? One of the things <laughs> that they were up at first upset with was we had to do this for, the, for a lot of the projects. I said, just walk me through the entire process of using create me an experience map, journey map, they're all empathy map. They're all very, very similar. But map, map out the, map it out. Why? Because this is what needs to go in your portfolio. Yeah. 
So as we look at um, user portfolios, right, UX portfolios, what we're trying to avoid here, let me get into this part, right, we're trying to avoid, right, just something that is just wonderfully awesome to look at. A wonderfully designed portfolio is st table stakes. It is baseline requirements. Like, I know y'all can do that. I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about you having the design chops, right? What I'm worried about though, is when we go through your designs, right? And we take a look, right? So here, right here, Jess, Jess Eddy's, um is a world famous designer. I mean, UX designer. Um, her video isn't up here anymore, but um, I brought up her site because if you go onto the about section, it's it's a glorif it's like what we're doing with our bias. And if we take a look at her work, right, it has the same type of metadata and is is it cutting out? Okay, it has the same metadata. It has it has very similar descriptions about deliverables. Yeah, and it has things that has more in common with what you're doing than it different. Okay. And um, so here, that this is right in terms of um, our, let me skip around here. In terms of our, right, metadata, right? That this right here is the tagline. What's this project about? There you go. Right, that's it. In one short sentence, that's what the project is about. All right, we'll get back into this and close that up. Okay, again, um, these are the the slides from the previous quarter. Yeah, that. But um, I, I want you to go through them again. Right, making sure that you're understanding what why we're doing what we're doing. Yeah, and how they relate to the different chapters in your textbook. And sometimes I feel like if you, if you have a question about it, like your textbook kind of um, reinforces and defends like what we're trying to do here. So uh, I thought I'll also start there. Okay, all that said, let's get pragmatic and let's be fast. First off, some of you haven't done enough of this. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the, the parts. And the first one is part zero. Past examples, okay, I'm gonna bring up one or two maybe. Um, what you need though is keep asking is how is your portfolio gonna stand out from these? I'm not saying these are the best ones. I'm saying these are some good ones, but these were made a long time ago. But some, Colin, some of these were made in the fall. I know, a long time ago. <laughs> okay, and so what you need to ask is, you know, how is yours gonna be different? And then always, how can it be improved? Okay, it's your portfolio. These are just guidelines. Um, what I'm gonna bring up is here, I thought about Bella's and then Peter's, where was Peter's? Toys was good. There it is. All right, um, here is Peter's, there's his bio, right? The spoke dashboard, what he did for it. Okay, why he did it. Right, the who, and we can keep going down, down. The point I'm trying to make here is you can guess what other aspects will be there, right? Like, what are your expectations for, for what should be in a portfolio and, and then all lays out there? Okay, now one that is much different than that is Bella's. Okay, so that's just a nice, oh yeah, having an image and, and like, we have to look at a lot of portfolios and a picture is really, really helpful, y'all. <laughs> Right, we got to attach a face to a, to a uh, to a resume and a portfolio, and then just a picture is just very very helpful, right? Oh, the person with the elephant, that's helpful, really really helpful. What designer was that? The person with the elephant. All right, so here she broke down right the the old side, the new side, right, and and the process to get there. These are deliverables right here, right? The SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats, right? You did all of that in UX two, yeah. But what I want to show where her uh, portfolio differs here is this is the game that was made, right? 
and this was a like a very popular game that day because you get to destroy stuff right but what she wanted to show is no she constructed all of this like these weren't purchased things and this was the game that was made and here are the kids playing the game and where this differs is here's what we're missing again right she also happens was uh, happened to be a bfa student all right and we can actually otherwise if there's just pictures of this this is what's missing and um somewhere else you can actually see videos of people interacting with this right because it's really hard to describe what love goggles are right and this is a great shot of it right there when you put these on like things on the screen become apparent and visible right now are all of your projects going to have like this much detail no i wish right but so what you need to do is start fleshing out other things from your projects right wait so what do i mean by that don't say research what kind of research client interviews persona card sorting design all right what design right i did the navigation system right i did the icon set like be very very specific the point i'm trying to make here is we know what projects you're doing and what i can't do is tell you what to put in your portfolio what i'm trying to say is begin to unearth all that you did you did a lot we know you did a lot now you need to tell people like chad clark what a lot is good good okay gotta go yo chad there's a user story check all right you're gonna oh all right oh he also tar started talking about coding it's like <laughs> about like how he has to code for his job and everybody's room like, oh, colin's gonna say i stood up again like yeah i told you but different different class all right with me so far on part zero, big picture. Colin, you're rehashing stuff we've already done in the past. Yeah, I know. I, I need to make sure that we're crystal clear on what needs to be done here. <laughs> we good? Keep asking. What is different? Right? What will make your, what will stand out? Um, okay. So in your own time, okay, look at all the projects that um, Victoria did. Uh, only one, two, three, four of those are mine. Four of those are from my classes. We had one class together. Because what do I do in UX3? I overload you. I give you as many th projects as I possibly can, right? To really build up your portfolio to make it stand out. Okay. And, and if, we, if we need other projects, I got them, right? If, you're, if, you're, if, you, if you say to yourself right now, like, I wish I had another project. Let's do one. We can do this. <laughs> this is opportunity, right? We have clients. We have people that need work done. We can do this. If you want something different in your portfolio than what your classmates are doing, let me know. We can make this happen. Okay, this is an opportunity, not work. Okay. All right, I'm not going to re rehash our old slides. Go ahead and take a look at that in your own time. All right, so there is your past examples. All right, bio. Let's go ahead and take a look at the bio real fast. All right, short bio. Do you get that short one, that elevator pitch, that one for an email? Okay, medium bio, longer emails, introductionary emails, presentations. Okay, medium bio is what you would put on a presentation slide. The long, long bios, right? The long, long bios, right? Great for a cover letter, even better. Eventually, someday you're going to be doing white papers. Eventually, someday you're going to be working for a company and they're going to want a long bio, right? And so that's why we need to have these three biographies. Okay. And some of these, some of us, majority of us, I take this back, majority of us have this done inside of our Notion card. Good job. Some of you are slacking here. Get your bio done. Okay. Good, good. Thumbs. Okay. All right. Move quickly. Move quickly. All right. Next one. Metadata. Okay, so this is going to lead into the production part of our portfolio. Okay. All right. So we, we looked at this example in previous class. Again, majority of us have this done. If you're missing this, you know, do it. Okay. All right. 
so what I need you to do is now, now this is the tedious part. I promise you that this is tedious, but I also promise you that in the future, this will be very, very helpful to you, right? Okay. What I need you to do right now is just start putting your metadata inside of a Google Sheet, and here's an example, or inside of a spreadsheet, okay? And we're gonna upload that spreadsheet to to uh, Google, and then we're gonna pull this data into our uh, Figma project. Like I said, copying and pasting isn't the way forward. Copy and pasting isn't the way forward. All right, so what is the name of your project? In this case, it's project XYZ. Okay, XYZ, the tagline, right? Super cool project about a <laughs> coffee alarm clock. <laughs> This is gonna go on YouTube and they're gonna be like, he's, made, he's making fun of our project. Um, wake and, oh, I need a tagline. Wake and, uh, wake and what? Wake and bake. We don't bake coffee. And I know, but. That, no, I'm just saying that's a bad tip. I'll get you coffee. I was just smell referencing that. tell bacon nights. What we got? Rise and grind. Oh, I like rise it. Rise and grind. Designers, you're going to have to do a lot of this in your career. Right? You're going to have to write these kind of, especially if you work in advertising. This is the fun part of advertising, by the way. I love the branding part. We all want to do branding. A lot of brandings come from the idea and words. All right. In long summary, we can put that inside of here. Okay. This is a, this is a very long summary. All right, if I had lower my epsom, I would put it in here. Okay, so you get this all inside of here. Okay. You, whether you do this um, locally and upload it, like you can just go into um, Google Sheets and import it. The challenging part here is I have to standardize this workflow. And for some of you, like Colin, I already did this on like a text file or somewhere else. What I'm saying is get it to a spreadsheet. You will thank me in the future, I promise you. Yeah, because some of this might change, not for this quarter, but for in the future. You might want to update all this stuff and you want to be able to pull this stuff in quickly. All right, the other thing that we're going to do at the end of the quarter is you're going to put this into a, a different formats. Okay, not just the PDF. Like you're going to be able to pull this into like websites and anywhere else. You're like, wow, I have one source of truth. Okay, where all of your projects are going. And that's how a design system works. Okay, all right. Here's the one time you need to listen to me today, okay? A design system is one source of truth. And I need you to get used to not working on a blank canvas that you throw stuff on. You need to have a single source of truth. That's why we have design systems, okay? And we need to start working that way. It's not a blank screen that I put stuff on, right? It's a process. All right, so there's that. All right, we good, Mad metadata, we good. Thumbs, we did this, all right. Alan, is that a cat? Mm, a dog? No. My dog. Mm -hmm. I have a bittersweet story about how we almost got a cat this weekend. But that's, I guess, for after class. Mm. And I'm allergic. How's that? I'm, I'm wildly allergic to cats. And... All right. So we're good on metadata. Okay. All right. Next part is the actual deliverables. And this is where you're going to be spending a lot of time, all right? This is all the stuff I've been having you do all quarter. Collect stuff, make screenshots, right? So clearly define each deliverable, right? So in your in all these portfolios that we're taking a look at right here, let's see here. Under the past examples is what you don't want to do is be designing and thinking about a deliverable. Don't design and think about deliver. Who else could we, huh? Justices and Chad. Okay. One of the things we do, right, is we try to have our users, right? When we design for users, we try to reduce their cognition, right? Cognition or what you're thinking about, right? This cognition load. And when you're designing, be designing. And when you're producing content, like right, be producing content. When you're thinking about metadata, have that only be the, have that be the focus. So all the stuff was pulled in from the Google Sheet, right? Including that image, if you wanted to.
But when you start talking about the deliverables here, right? Like this would be part of the deliverables, right? This, this, uh, this part right here is have that stuff already. Don't be searching for these screenshots, right? When you're, when you're designing in Figma, have that ready. And that's what I mean by our deliverables, right? So uh, justice is with the same way. Yeah. So again, that content was pulled in from Google Sheets um, right here, right? These dashboard screenshots. Like that's part of the deliver. What was the deliver? The, 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 what was the artifact here? Okay. Would a packaging product count as a UX? Everything counts as UX. Just as long as someone interacts with it. No, um, we can take this to the end of class if you want to. Okay. But but everything is easier to. Um, what is that called? Manny, look at this. You know these blister packaging packs, right? When I when I was growing up, I didn't have these blister packaging. Right? What's the user experience on this? Right? You ever have packaging that's really hard to open, and you have to you have to go get a pair of scissors, or you have to get an exacto knife. Right? This isn't a good user experience. Okay, you. Oh my goodness. Um, Children's toys are the worst to undo. Children's toys have those twist ties on an individual arm and leg, right? So what is the user experience? Designed a packaging that was easier to get out, right? Design packaging. Um, there's a reason, right? I, I don't, good, bad, indifferent, I don't care, right? But there's a reason people save their Apple boxes, maybe because they spent a whole bunch of money on this, but why are people saving the packaging? Because it's part of the user experience is I'm gonna make the experience of opening this, this product up nice, right? Versus this, which is really, really, okay. I can go on a rant <laughs> about user experience and packaging, you know, right? Because the packaging helps, makes it, it makes it feel, um, cheap or or not you know good good does that help answer your question yeah. yes yes all right so get that stuff set up now like including links to all of your stuff like get it that's part of the deliverable okay get that stuff up front all right thumbs we're good on deliverables okay production all right go ahead and fire up figma and let's go ahead and do this all right, if you fire up Figma and production. So you need to set up a Figma project, okay? Um, you begin to just start defining now, we can start thinking about um, your, your design, okay? Uh, we saw Danielle's example was already all set up. Danielle, can you put a link to that in the chat, please? If you're still here, you're still here? And then um, we're going to import the data. We're not going to copy it. Okay. All right. So that's what I'm going to do right now. We are going long. Okay. Let's go ahead and create a new Figma project like so. Okay. I just had. All right. You're going to create a new project, Figma project. What do we call it? This thing, UX portfolio. Didn't we already have one called UX portfolio? I guess not. Okay. You should already have this. And from the description, it needs to be what? 11 by 17 paper, right? So roughly this way. Um, designers, right? How do I, I flip this around? How do I make this thing landscape? Are that the dimensions? Is there any way to just flip it? Uh, I don't know if in Figma you can just flip it. Oh, right there. There you go. Good. All right. So for Friday, this Friday, you're going to have your cover page. Okay. Whatever that may be. And that's going to change. Believe me, it's going to change. You're going to have your bio. Okay. And, and all I want is one project. Okay. 
project A. Okay. And project A can have multiple pages. My only requirement for this project is you export it out to PDF. That's it. We're going to talk about all the other delivery formats later. Okay. Because Figma can put out to uh, other formats. All right. Inside of project A, what we're going to do here is make some fields here. So there's a text field. This is going to be name. See where this class breaks down? Like we can't have a look at me point and click. Like it doesn't work remotely. Um, was it name tagline? Yeah. All right. That's enough. Okay. If we can do two fields, we can do 20 fields. What you're going to do is you're going to install this plugin. Okay. Called Google Sheets Sync. Like so. Okay. And this works really, really easily. This basically says all you need to do is preface um, each of these fields with a pound sign. So instead of saying name, you're going to put a pound sign in front of the name. And say instance tagline, you're going to put a pound sign in front of tagline. And then you can all go to the metadata. All right, so we're going to use our imaginations and pretend like this is all done, right? So here's our name and there's our tagline and there's our summary. Okay. So that's the name of that field. That's the name of that field and that's the name of that field. And what we want to do here is let's go ahead and make a third field. All right. So let's see how much if I've lost you yet. I want this field here called summary. All right. Am I doing this right? No. What do I need to do, Lillian? You need to add a pound sign in front of summary. Okay. Good. That's it. Okay. Colin, what's the big freaking deal? All right. Again, two fields, three fields, or 3,000 fields. Okay. This data is going to change. And this is a lot of like what you're going to do as a designer. Like you, you need to separate your modes. When you're in design mode, design. When you're in content mode, content. Okay. And being a compartmentalize like this is, is a key skill that we're trying to reinforce in UX3. Okay. So what are you learning in UX3? Process, process, process. All right. So now that we got this, um, you know how to run um, plugins because you um, took UX1 and 2 and I said make, make them better at Figma than I am. Okay. And you, you know how to install plugins and we're going to use this plugin called Google Sheets Sync. And then we're going to simply grab the, the share link and that's that same one that you're looking at. Okay. And you're going to paste it in like this and then you're going to go fetch and sync and it does its magic. I'm going to sip this water. I'm going to turn those fields on. Oh, uh, uh, y'all, why did that mess up? <laughs> Where did I put my content? Wrong row, right? I put it in this row. There we go. All right, hit save and close on that again. Okay. Same thing, right? So what's nice is we just changed the data on this. Okay, so we can come in here and right, a better summary. And so it's going to grab these three fields, right? Or 300. We have the share link. And what's nice about this plugin is you can just run it all over again. So plugins, all right? Fetch and sync. Ta da! Slow clap. Everybody, clap. Let me know you're there. Okay. So why is this important? Because your projects aren't dead. Your projects are alive. Your portfolio is a living document. And I need you to get, understand this because you work in a field that has version, alpha version, beta version, version one, version two, and this info is gonna get changed. And then someday, right? under uh, results, you're going to be like, the project I designed went live, right? And instead of saying, you know, Figma prototype, guess what you can say? And this is what I'm looking forward to someday. Ready? Download 
from App Store. And then inside of here is a link A to what? All right. This is going to be the link to download the app that you designed. All right. And this is what I'm looking for. And then and then you're like, oh, we oh we're designing this, but we ran into a copyright issue, and it turns out a product can't be named XYZ. So we're gonna have to name it something else, right? Like um we're gonna name it Colin is is weird. There you go, right? So you change the name of the app to Colin is weird. Okay. You're like, oh, right, first design, uh, I gotta go in my portfolio and change all these things, rough and scruffing, rah, 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 rah. Second designer. <laughs> Oh, I got this, fam. Highlight the field you want to change. Okay. Fetch it, refetch the data. Fetch and sync. Boom. This is content. And now if you want to redesign it, good. You don't have to think about if it's is it spelled right. Right? And when you go work on large scale projects, you're gonna have people managing your content, and this is how they're gonna do it. And I just need you to be, be able to see all the different layers of how they all come together. Okay, again, refresh yourself on the, on the slides. Let's see here, I'm going kind of fast. If you think you're bored, my son is bored by this. All right, so we took care of production. Lastly, delivery. Okay. The only thing I want from you is love my 17 PDF. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. I also want to know who's going to be looking at this. I need you to list out three companies and or people that are going to see this portfolio. There's no point. If, if I'm the only person that ever sees this, this project has failed. There's no point in doing this. Okay. I hope you have more than three. Why am I doing this? Because but Colin, I'm never going to work in this field. That's not the point, right? The point is you have a body of work to show to a lot of different people, not just UX people, right? Check, check. Okay. Um, how would you, how would you like incorporate multiple portfolios then if, you know, like if, if you have a UX and then like, a, I don't know, a brand or whatever portfolio. Easy, Ben. Create a new project All right? called branding. Pull in that same content. Done. All right? What are you going to change? The design of it, but the content's going to stay the same. All right. Good, good. All right. Lastly, All right. what other ways can we deliver this? And so we saw with... Um, Danielle's right. She has a website. If you're taking UX, I mean Web three, or if you're taking Web two, right? We know how to make a portfolio. You can put this. You can put the same content on your website. Okay. One of the things I'm gonna have you do in Figma is we're gonna export it out as a, as an ebook. Right. There's other formats you can do. Okay. Dribble is another place that you can put this content, Colin. But you didn't you just like criticize Dribble? No. All right, I'm stopping the share, stop.